Hello and welcome back to the Dark Side of the Library. I'm your host, Carrie Carolyn, and I'm here with my very spooky co-host, Katie, oh. of the Katie Draws YouTube channel. Please, Please don't stop. kill me. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I'm not. We are here to present all of the intriguing dark nonfiction books coming out in September 2022. This includes cookbooks and art books and history books and some serial killer stuff and some horror nonfiction. So let's dive in. Katie is going to present the first book pick today. Yeah, it's called American Demon. Elliot Ness and the Hunt for America's Jack the Ripper. This comes out September 6th. It's by Daniel Stash Hour. I thought it was going to be Stash Tower. So Boston had its strangler. California had the Zodiac Killer. And in the depths of the Great Depression, Cleveland had the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. Ew. Yeah. On September 5th, 1934, a young beachcomber made a gruesome discovery on the shores of Cleveland's Lake Erie. The lower half of a female torso, neatly severed at the waist. Oh, Ew. God. This is why I don't ever go beachcombing. Oh, no. This is terrifying, actually. Now that I've... Ugh. Okay, so the victim dubbed the Lady of the Lake was only the first of a butcher's do dozen. Over the next four years, 12 more bodies would be scattered across the city. The bodies were dismembered with sur surgical precision and drained of blood. Some were even, uh, and trigger warning here, some were beheaded while still alive. Ew. Yep. Uh, terror gripped the city, understandably. Amid the growing uproar, Cleveland's besieged mayor turned to his newly appointed director of public safety, Elliot Ness. So Ness had come to Cleveland fresh from his headline-grabbing exploits in Chicago, where he and his band of, quote, untouchables led the frontline assault on Al Capone's bootlegging empire. Now he would confront a case that would redefine his storied career. This is really fascinating i've never heard of the story before i haven't either we read about serial killers all the time yeah this wow. is really cool i'm looking forward to reading this because uh i personally think jack the ripper is a really interesting story this is really grotesque and it seems huge but understated <laughs> Because I've never heard of it before. So this is American Demon, Elliot Ness and the Hunt for America's Jack the Ripper by Daniel Stashauer. That's a hard one to follow up, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm presenting The Art of Darkness, A Treasury of the Morbid, Melancholic, and Macabre, Volume 2. The author is S. Elizabeth, and the publisher is Francis Lincoln. It comes out September 13th. It's a visually rich source book featuring eclectic artworks that have been inspired and informed by the morbid, melancholic, and macabre, everything that we like around here. So throughout history, artists have been obsessed with darkness, creating works that haunt and horrify and mesmerize and delight and play on our innermost fears. Gentileschi took revenge with paint in Judith slaying Holofernes, while Bosch depicted fearful visions of hell that still beguile us. Victorian Britain became strangely obsessed with the dead, which is why goths like Victorian Britain history so much. Yeah. And in Norway, Munch explored anxiety and fear in one of the most famous paintings in the world, The Scream. Mm. So today, the Chapman brothers, Damien Hirst and Louise Bourgeois, as well as many lesser known artists working in the margins, are still drawn to all that is macabre. So this chapters in this book are dreams and nightmares, matters of mortality, depravity and destruction, gods and monsters, etc. This book introduces sometimes disturbing and often beautiful artworks that indulge our greatest fears. So the artists that are covered in this book include Picasso, as you would imagine, Georgia O'Keeffe, Francisco de Goya, Leonora Carrington, one of my favorites, John Everett Millay, Tracy Amin or Emin, I've never heard of them, Vincent Van Gogh, Barbara Hepworth, Paul Cezanne, and Salvador Dali, as well as scores more. There are 200 carefully curated artworks from across the centuries in the Art of Darkness. 
This is a perfect coffee table book, especially during the spooky season, when you invite over your witchiest friends for tea. That's The Art of Darkness, A Treasury of the Morbid, Melancholic, and Macabre, Volume 2, by S. Elizabeth. Beautiful. I'm I'm really curious about that book. I really want to look through it. Speaking of art books, I have something a little more contemporary. I have The Art and Making of The Boys. It comes out September 27th. It's by Peter Aperlo. If you haven't seen The Boys, it is a fantastic show. It's an even greater comic book series. If you like dark, disturbing, uh, I guess the alternate, the alternative way to view superheroes as being more of a darker entity versus a uplifting one this is for you so the art of the art and making of the boys book is a fascinating insight into the darkest wittiest most shocking series on tv a pitch black satire of superheroes and corporate america based on this amazing comic book series uh this book is packed with eye-popping exclusive art behind the scenes photography and interviews with the cast and crew detailing how and why the boys came to our screens it's the perfect companion to the show and treasure trove for fans and it's probably packed with blood and gore and splatter everywhere because that's what it is that's what we do (laughs) <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. So that is The Art and Making of the Boys by Peter Aperlo. My next book is The Book of Mysteries of the Unexplained by Publications International, which is actually a pretty good publisher. Uh, it comes out September 1st. It features 230 fascinating true stories across six chapters. The topics are unsolved deaths, unusual disappearances, haunted homes, unexplained phenomena, creepy creatures, and ghostly appearances. You can learn about the Zodiac Killer, Jack the Ripper, the Bermuda Triangle, my house, no, I'm just kidding, (laughs) the ghosts that lingers in the White House, the monsters that lurk throughout America, and much more. It's a hardcover book, 640 pages. This would be great for your reference library, especially if you're an author. It's the book of Mysteries of the Unexplained by Publications International. Next up, I have a book called The Book of Phobias and Manias, A History of Obsession. This comes out September 27th. This is by Kate Summerscale. This book is a thrilling compendium of 99 obsessions that have shaped us all, the rare and the familiar, from, let's see if I can say this correctly, a blutophobia, which is a horror of washing... Oh, my brother had that when he was a teenager. Really? Interesting. Not really, but he was really smelly. <laughs> <laughs> there is also siglomania, a compulsion to hoard, and then zoophobia, a fear of animals. Phobias and manias are deeply personal experiences and among the most common anxiety disorders of our time, but they are also clues to our shared past. So the author uses rich and riveting case studies to trace the origins of our obsessions, unearthing a history of human strangeness from the Middle Ages to the present day, and a wealth of explanations for some of our most powerful aversions and desires. I'm definitely picking this one up. It's called The Book of Phobias and Manias, A History of Obsession by Kate Summerscale. Is there a chapter inside on how I hoard books and I have an aversion to vacuuming? I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> My next book is a scholarly book, so those of you into gothic academia, sit up and listen. It is a $115 hardcover called Decolonizing the Undead, Rethinking Zombies in World Literature, Film, and Media. It's a scholarly look by Stephen Shapiro. Julia Champion and Roseanne, or Roxanne Douglas it comes out September 22. The book looks beyond Euro, Anglo, US centric zombie narratives. It reconsiders representations and allegories constructed around this figure of the undead, probing its cultural and historical weight across different nations and its significance to post colonial, decolonial, and neoliberal discourses. They take stock of zombies as they appear in literature, film, and television from the Caribbean, 
Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, India, Japan, and Iraq. This book explores how the undead reflect a plethora of experiences that have previously been obscured by Western preoccupations and anxieties. These include embodiment and dismemberment in Haitian revolutionary contexts, resistance and subversion to social realities in the Caribbean and Latin America, and this goes on and on. It is fascinating. Oh my goodness. They also occasionally mention some contextual explorations of American culture zombie narratives, like Zombie Walks, and the TV series The Santa Clarita Diet, which I loved. Yeah. And there's many contributors to this book, so it's very comprehensive. The publisher is Bloomsbury Academic, and it's Decolonizing the Undead, Rethinking Zombies in World Literature, Film, and Media. And I wanted to point out, since we're talking about so many different books today, and you're probably jogging or writing in your car, when you get home, check out our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com, where you'll find our affiliate links to purchase all of these books, or at least keep track of them so you can think about them in the future. Yeah, definitely. Because this next one might be a bit of a <laughs> twist, a 360 from what we've been uh, working with these past couple books. I'm doing a cookbook, actually. It is Death for Dinner Cookbook. Yum! Six I, right? Yay, I love dying, I guess. Uh, so it's 60 gory, good, plant-based drinks, meals, and munchies inspired by your favorite horror films. That's hilarious that this is Ooh. actually plant-based as well. <laughs> so <That> is. <laughs> I was like, plant-based? That surprised me. So we have depraved desserts and cursed cocktails and other items monstrous mains and crazy recipes like Crystal Lake barbecue sliders from Friday the 13th, <laughs> Children of the Hominy. <laughs> oh, Lord. I know, this is punny. Uh, the Hills Have Fries. Oh, goodness. Oh, jeez. I know. Uh, Blood Orange Cheesecake Trifle, which is actually inspired by Dexter. Never Sleep Again, which is inspired by uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. It is, it is a cocktail made with coffee. So though the recipes may look horrifying, they are easy to make and will impress even the most stubborn carnivores. So get ready to throw the ultimate Halloween party or some epic movie nights, which is perfect. I'm so excited. This is coming out at exactly the right time. This comes out September 6th. This is by Zach Neal. Check it out if you are getting ready for the Halloween season and wanting to do a lot of movie nights with creepy, awesome movies. Uh, Death for Dinner Cookbook, 60 Gory Good Plant-Based Drinks, Meals, and Munchies inspired by your favorite horror films. My next book is A Haunted History of Invisible Women, True Stories of America's Ghosts. It's a paperback. It's by Liana Renee Heber. You've probably heard of her because she does a lot of cool books like this. So it features sorrowful widows, vengeful Jezebels, innocent maidens, wronged lovers, former slaves, even the occasional eh, axe murderers. <laughs> America's female ghosts differ widely in background, class, and circumstance. Yet one thing unites them, their ability to instill fascination and fear long after their deaths. Here are the full stories behind some of the best known among them, as well as the lesser known. So tales whispered in darkness often divulge more about the teller than the subject. America's most famous female ghosts, such as Mrs. Spencer, who haunted Joan Rivers' New York apartment, to Bridget Bishop, the first person executed during the Salem witchcraft trials, a sad face, they mirror each era's fears and prejudices. Yet through urban legends and campfire stories, even ghosts like the nameless, hard-working women lost in the infamous Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire achieve a measure of power and agency in death in ways that were unavailable to them as living women. I'm super fascinated to read this. Another great book for your library, if, especially if you're an author or researcher. It's A Haunted History of Invisible Women, by Leanna Renee Heber, comes out September 27. If you are somebody who is into fabric art, I like to call it fabric art, uh, check out Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas embroidery book. It's really, really cool. It comes out September 20th. It is by the editors of Thunder Bay Press. 
There are 10 projects featuring characters and scenes from the classic Disney film, The Nightmare Before Christmas. These are very, very cute. I'm actually really jealous of people who can accomplish any of these awesome things because and I just don't have time to learn all of it but these are very very detailed I see Sandy Claus and these can be yeah we also have the spiral hill with Jack and Sally on there with the holding hands and little hearts so there's a lot of really cute crafts in here it's got a great guide and step-by-step photos that'll help you along the way if you're really into um, embroidery check this one out it is Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas embroidery book comes out September 20th so I actually am not very crafty and not very talented at doing many things, but I actually used to be pretty good with a needle. Oh. And I'm kind of tempted. I'm a little worried because my eyesight, you know, I'm much older than when I was sewing as a girl, <laughs> but I just got my eyes checked and I swear I have 20-20 vision still, even though I'm a goth granny. So I'm kind of tempted to pick this up and give it a try this fall when I'm living for a few months in a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere with lots of snow, etc. I'm not going to have much to do. I might as well start embroidering. I think that would be a really cool idea, Carrie. You should yeah. do that. I love and, it. And that's something I can do while I listen to an audiobook or listen to some podcasts or watch TV that I don't need to pay 100% attention to. Yeah, exactly. I think I might. Yeah, do it. I'm excited. That's awesome. My next suggestion for a book is The Little Book of Horrors, a celebration of the spookiest night of the year. The publisher is Orange Hippo. Gotta love him. It comes out November 8th. This sounds like a children's book, but it is, it's nonfiction, but I would definitely buy it for an older child. Halloween is a very special time of year and takes on huge significance for a vast number of people in different ways. For many, it's a chance to dress up and wander the streets for trick-or-treat, gorge on candy and have a party but for others it's a time of remembrance of visits to ancestors graves or prayers at this holy time but what are the real origins and meanings of this festival that's commonly associated with darkness yay witches yay ghosts and ghouls the oldest known halloween celebration was the celtic samhain a time when the souls and spirits of the dead would find it easiest to return to visit the living Food was offered to keep the spirits happy, and eventually the festival was formalized by the church as a time of remembrance in advance of All Saints Day. So this book is a fun little guide to look at the history of all things Halloween, or All Hallows' Eve, from the earliest feasts and customs to the latest fun and games that are common around the world. I personally have a collection of books about the history of Halloween, so I'm definitely going to add this to it. This is The Little Book of Horrors, A Celebration of the Spookiest Night of the Year by Orange Hippo. I have another book that's kind of similar where it it could be for kids or for adults or older kids, sorry. So it's called An Illustrated History of Ghosts. This comes out September 13th. This is by Adam Boardman. Get to the heart of the unexplainable in the author's third edition to the Illustrated History series filled with private seances and ectoplasm to spiritual (laughs) mediums and spirit photography galore. Fans of conspiracy and strange phenomena will transport themselves across the centuries through diagrammatic illustrations paired with well-researched facts about exorcism, mediums, ghost photos, talking boards, and connections to the afterlife. Whether you are a ghost fanatic or simply piqued by curiosity, you'll get a robust deep dive into the experiences of paranormal occurrences, alternative explanations for these occurrences, and our culture's fascination with them. So this is going to be an awesome, strange journey that allows skeptical inquiry or perhaps the possibility of believing in the afterlife. Ooh. So this is an illustrated history of ghosts. I cannot look inside to see what the illustrations look like. The cover is very simple and kind of cute. We've got a ghost that clearly looks like it's made out of a sheet. (laughs) And that's (laughs) the only thing on the cover. It's I I like it. Maybe there's a reason they're hiding the illustrations. I don't know. (laughs) I know. I'm hoping. Maybe they're not great. (laughs) (laughs) Or they are great. (laughs) I don't know. Now I'm all curious. They piqued my uh, curiosity. That's for sure. So this is by Adam Boardman. It comes out September 13. 
my next book is about David Bowie because so many goths love and appreciate him and you don't yeah. have to be goth to like him. So many people do. But we wanted to include it because I have so many David Bowie fan friends. This is Moon Age Daydream, The Life and Times of Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie, the author, and Mick Rock, the photographer. This is the closest we'll ever get to a straight-up Bowie autobiography. But who'd ever want anything straight up from Bowie? That's a Rolling Stone quote. So in 2002, David Bowie and Mick Rock created Moon Age Daydream, the defining document of the life and times of Ziggy Stardust. 20 years later, it remains the closest readers will get to understanding Bowie through his own words. The book has 600 photographs taken by Mick Rock. Perfect last name, by the way. Mm. Bowie's personal and often humorous commentary gives unprecedented insight into his work and the creation of his most memorable persona. Readers can see how Bowie single-handedly challenged an elevated 1970s culture, as he did, through his style, his inspirations ranging from Kubrick to Kabuki, and his creative spirit, which endures through the decades. It was first published as a signed limited edition, and it sold out in a matter of months and became lore. And now on the 50th anniversary of Bowie's acclaimed album, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, and the Spiders for Mars, the book is available again. Oh. That's Moon Age Daydream, The Life and Times of Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie, R.I.P. Oh. My next book is called Masters of Makeup Effects, A Century of Practical Magic. I'm really Ooh. excited about this Ooh. book. Yeah, this one will be very fun. I haven't seen it. We see a lot of art books, but we don't see a lot of makeup artist books uh throughout the year so this is one of my i wouldn't call it a guilty pleasure i very much enjoy makeup art so this is by howard Berger, marshall julius uh the forward is actually by guillermo del toro because you know everything he's done requires amazing makeup effects this comes out september 20th this book is a celebration of makeup artists and acclaimed makeup effects from world of film and television Lavishly illustrated with hundreds of behind-the-scenes photos, many of which have never before been seen in print or on social media. It showcases some of the most iconic makeup effects of all time, while wow. re revealing how they came to be in the artist's own words. So as I'm looking through some of the things that Amazon has provided, we get almost like step-by-step -step photos on before and after, how everything is placed. Uh, really sinister art too, or makeup as well. I see some aliens, robots, creepy zombies, lots of creepy zombies. There's Yay. a there's cr a weird one here that almost looks like a guy turning into a werewolf, but this is makeup art, and his jaw, the way they've done the makeup effects, it looks like he's, his jaw is actually unhinged. It's wild how they're Ooh. able to do this. So it's really cool. This is really fascinating. This is called Masters of Makeup Effects, A Century of Practical Magic. This is by Howard Berger and Marshall Julius. My next book is The Tarot Spellbook, 78 Witchy Ways to Use Your Tarot Deck for Magic and Manifestation. It's by Sam Magdaleno. It comes out September 13 from Fairwinds Press. It's a journey through the 78 cards of the Rider-Waite-Smith deck providing a unique spell that corresponds with each card. The publisher's blurb says connecting with the 78 cards of the tarot in a meaningful way can be overwhelming, which can lead to scouring reference books and memorizing meanings rather than actually using the cards themselves. Hmm. The tarot spellbook gives you a fun way to learn the cards and a practical way to work with them beyond divination and reading. Each of the 78 spells in the spellbook is categorized into one of eight popular spell categories, either self, change, love, money, career, wellness, protection, and my favorite, home. Because the lessons taught by tarot cards are those that apply to all aspects of life, from karmic soul lessons to the smaller daily events, the spells in the tarot spellbook cover everything you need for a variety of common life situations. They provide journal questions to aid in introspection. They give you tips on candle magic, spell jars, ritual baths, and more. I'm definitely going to pick this up. It's the Tarot Spellbook 78 Witchy Ways to Use Your Tarot Deck for Magic and Manifestation by Sam Magdaleno. 
I'm excited for this one because I, even though I've been doing tarot for, you know, over 20 years or whatever, I still don't have any of them memorized, really. So it'd be nice to have a book that actually encourages you to find some sort of association with each card. So. Well, and I, I feel like I, I mostly have the major arcana memorized, but if you pull out, like, you know, a five of pentacles, I'm like, mm -hmm. uh-oh. Uh, and I have to go look. <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> There's just so many cards. And anyway, next up, I have the Stephen King Ultimate Companion, a complete oh. exploration of his work, life, and influences. <gasps> Need it. Christmas list, wish list, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Bought, pre-ordered right now. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that got so musical. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> We're very excited. Uh, this comes out September 13. This is by Bev Vincent. So timed with Stephen King's 75th birthday on oh. September 21st. Oh, let's throw a party. That would be fun. We should definitely do a Stephen King episode again. That'd be awesome. Yes. So this book features archival photos and documents from King's personal collection alongside the stories behind how his novels, novellas, short stories, and adaptations came to be, with critically acclaimed titles that have been turned into blockbuster sensations like It and Carrie, King's work has stood the test of time across decades. This history of the writer's struggles, triumphs, bestsellers, lesser-known stories, collaborations, and more makes the perfect addition to any Stephen King fan's collection. Celebrate the beloved king of horror with this informational and entertaining look inside King's most iconic titles and the culture they have created. You can't really go to any horror lover and not expect them to at least know who Stephen King is or be able to list off, you know, five or six of his books at the very least. So check this one out, The Stephen King Ultimate Companion. This is by Bev Vincent. And yeah, you don't have, not everyone has to like Stephen King books or know a lot about him. But if you're a horror reader, he might not be your jam, yeah. might not be your type of book, but you've probably read a couple of his books. Yeah. Because you had to, to find out, eh, this isn't for me. Yeah. And for, I love his writing, but I don't read every single one of his books. I'm definitely going to pick up Fairy Tale, but yeah. it depends on the subject matter of the book or if it's an enticing, you know, plot. Yeah. The ones that have baseball or sports themes that's just not for me so i skip those sure yeah absolutely i have two books left today to chat about this next one is werewolf pack magic a shapeshifter's book of shadows it is a non-fiction book by denny Sargent. it's from beloved llewellyn publications coming out september 8 this lycanthropic book of shadows unites you with your spiritual kin and invites them to join in rituals romps and spells that call on the feral magic within and about you. Denny Sargent teaches you ecstatic shape-shifting experiences, newly revived from ancient traditions, and designed to free you from the restrictive chains of civilization. With your pack, you will return to your true home in the heart of Mother Nature. So Werewolf Pack Magic offers a wide variety of activities, including pack initiations, shape-shifting training, werewolf divination, Pack Sabbath celebrations and ancient werewolf festivals. Interesting. Not my jam, no, but not I'm mine. glad this has been published for those of you that enjoy it. Danny reveals that pack magic is intense, powerful, wildly fun, and effective. I don't think this is aimed at furries. It's a little more serious than that. It is Werewolf Pack Magic, a shapeshifter's book of shadows by Denny Sargent. My next book, I am really excited about because I just learned something about my own state. It is called The United States of Cryptids, A Tour of American mm. Myths and Monsters. It comes Ooh. out September 27th. It is by J.W. Ocker. So what I just read is that Washington has a winged Bigfoot that is said to have emerged from the eruption of Mount St. Helens called Bat Squatch. Did oh. you... <laughs> No. I did what? not know about this. That's a hilarious name. I'm sorry. It is. And I now I'm kind of like, I need to go camp over in that area just so that I can go bat squatch hunting or something. Oh, you're brave. <laughs> or well, foolish. It just seems so cute having just like a winged Bigfoot. I don't know. Anyway, so we have in this book different cryptids 
all across the globe, all across the nation. Sorry. So an example of that is Bat Squatch. Obviously, we have Lizard Man of South Carolina, the Flatwoods Monster of West Virginia, Nain Rouge of Michigan, which is a fierce red goblin that has been spotted before every major city disaster in Dr- Detroit. Wild. Whoa. Yeah, there's the Gla Gla set. Oh my goodness, I can't say this word. A fire-breathing dragon that guards a hoard of pirate treasure in Rhode Island. I Whoa. There's so many of these that I didn't know. I like that we have like the Jersey Devil or the Mothman. Those ones are obviously in this, but there's a bunch of cryptids I've never heard of and I'm really excited to learn more about. So if that's something that interests you as well, learning about American folklore and history and creepy cryptids, check out the United States of Cryptids, a tour of American myths and monsters by J.W. Ocker. You know, if you actually go camping by Mount St. Helens looking for this thing, I'm going to start calling you Bat Squatch crazy. <laughs> I might actually do it. It sounds fun. <laughs> My final book today is a cookbook. Yay! Ooh. It is The Witch's Cookbook, 50 Wickedly Delicious Witchcraft-Inspired Recipes by Fortuna Noir. Chefs and bakers may seem to wield magic in the way they can whip up the most amazing dishes and desserts, but they're nothing compared to the original brewmasters, witches! This features over 50 wickedly delicious recipes. It's your short and sweet go-to for quick and easy meals with a mystical flair. Each recipe is witchcraft-themed and can be made with traditional ingredients, plus a little bit of spell work and magic, of course. The publisher is Rock Point, and they've given us a little preview inside. I can look at the contents, and it's written in a fancy font and very celestial graphics. So the chapters include a magical hearth and home, sun salut- salutation, excuse me, breakfast and brunch, dark bliss, lunch and dinner, Enchanting Small Bites is the Appetizers and Sides chapter. Spell Dot Binding Sweets is Desserts. And finally, the conclusion is a Cauldron of Nourishment. I'm definitely going to pick this up for my Dark Side Cookbook Library. It's The Witch's Cookbook by Fortuna Noir. And my final book of today is called What Remains? Life, Death, and the Human Art of Undertaking. This oh. is by Rupert Callender comes out September 15th. When he became an undertaker, the author undertook to deal with the dead for the sake of the living. So this book is brilliant. It's an unforgettable story of the life and work of the world's first punk undertaker. But it is also a book about ordinary, everyday humanity and our capacity to face death with courage and compassion. To say goodbye to the people we love in our own way. So in becoming the world's first, quote, punk undertaker and establishing the Green Funeral Company in Devon, UK, Rue Callender and his partner Claire challenged the stilted traditional structured world of the funeral industry, fusing what he had learned from his own deeply personal experiences with death with the surprising and profound answers and raw emotion he discovered in rave culture and ritual magic. Wow. Wow, this book is so cool. From his unresolved grief for his parents and his cultural ancestors to political and religious nonconformists, social outlaws, experimental pioneers, and acid house culture, the author has taken to an outsider DIY ethos to help people navigate grief and death. He has carried coffins across windswept beaches, sat in pubs with caskets on beer-stained tables, helped children fire flaming arrows into their funerals, father's funeral pyre, uh, turned modern occult rituals into performance art, and with the band members of KLF, is building the People's Pyramid of Bony Bricks in Liverpool. Whoa, this book has so much going on in here. It does. Wow. So check this out if you're into that kind of thing. This sounds fascinating. I I would love to give this a read myself. This is called What Remains? Death, Life, and the Human Art of Undertaking by Rupert Callender. It comes out September 15th. And that is the end of our nonfiction list for September 2022. I know that was a lot of books, but 
there's a lot coming out this month, so stay tuned. Uh, we have more books coming, YA children's books. We also have adult fiction. You can find our podcast episodes will be published on Wednesdays and Fridays, and at this rate, probably Mondays because there are so many. Also, again, make sure to check out our show notes on darksideofthelibrary.com for a whole list of these books if they somehow call to you and you want to read them. Also, you can join us on our social media channels. We've got YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and our Amazon Live channel at Dark Side of the Library. The Amazon channel is amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library for all your Halloween needs. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have a fantastic rest of your week.